Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you my typical travel setup when I use my Canon R system and RF glass along with the Nomadic 35 liter Peter McKinnon bag. I'm pleased to announce that I'm launching three Capture One style packs, Metamorphic Portraits, The Sound of Silver, and Rangefinder. These will eventually also be available for Lightroom, so if you go to kevindealphotography.com, scroll to the bottom of the homepage, and join my mailing list, I promise I won't send you spam, but I will let you know the second these release. And now, on to today's episode. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Dale Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. So since about 2018, I have been using a newer a roller bag to travel for work when I go out of town and I'm called to do portrait sessions, commercial sessions, etc. It's served me well, it's done a great job. However, when I take that bag with me on the road, it is strictly a photography bag. So when I pack my clothes and any other personal things, I have to take a separate bag with me. So it's always a two bag setup. Additionally, when I take that bag through TSA, get to the gate, the gate agents always single that bag out because it's gigantic, it's bulky, it looks like a cube. It looks like a roller bag, despite the fact that I'm trying to fool those agents by putting it on my shoulder. I knew I needed to solve a problem where I could consolidate both those types of bags, the personal bag and the camera bag, and then I also wanted it to look a little bit more like a backpack, which would single me out less with those gate agents. So I landed on the Peter McKinnon 35 liter bag, and I want to be upfront that I paid for this with my own money. So when you hear me say things that I like about it and things that I don't like about it, I wasn't given this for free. I paid for this with my own money. So let's get started on why I use this bag for travel. So there's two major ways to access the bag. Part number one is closer to your back, and that's where you keep all your camera gear. And then the second part is further on the back side of this, and this is where you keep all your clothes, uh, your toiletries, and all those other personal items. So we're gonna start with that and we're gonna open it up. It goes from the top down. Then I don't have clothes in here. I don't have anything breakable in here. So I'm just gonna let it fall out. But what you see right here, this looks a lot like your roller bag luggage. So you have this tie down. So when I travel, I will take my clothes. I will put them in these compression bags and you don't have to buy these compression bags. These are the uh, nomadic compression bags. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive than what you could get on Amazon. But when I bought this Peter McKinnon bag, they gave me points on their website, which I applied toward these compression bags, which made them quite a bit cheaper. Another note about these compression bags is because nomadic designs both the compression bags and the backpack, they're actually designed to work together. So they actually fit right into your bag and you don't have to worry about it not being big enough or being too big. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but looking at this, uh, this is where you'll keep your clothes. There's some pouches here where maybe you can keep your socks and underwear and other stuff. I keep my VSGO blower in the clothing side of my bag because I don't necessarily need to access it very often. So I don't keep it with the camera stuff. I did do a review of this if you want to check that out. But uh, because the newer Canon cameras have that window that goes down over the sensor, I'm not necessarily needing this as often. I typically only use this to blow dust off of lenses. So when you look at this, you have three different size pouches to store some of your clothing. Uh, you have two medium sized pouches and then one very large deep pouch. So there's quite a bit of room. If you zip this up and it's a little bit too tight, you can actually unzip this part right here. And then the bag expands out. Now I don't have anything to expand it out because I don't have a lot in here. I wanna show you some alternative loadouts you could do with this part of the bag, because many of you watching this don't take your bag on the road and then need clothing for overnight stays. You're actually maybe looking at this to further load out photography gear. So sometimes I'll get called to do video. In that case, I'll take my gimbal, and I'll put my gimbal in here. You can strap this down, you can close this, and then you have your video rig in there. Maybe you need to shoot tethered. In that case, you could take your tether tools cable and some of your tether tools accessories with you and fit that in there. So I just wanted to make sure that you saw that you don't necessarily have to put clothes in here. You could do alternative loadouts and further expand your photography gear. 
Since this is a bag about what I take with me on the road as much as it is a review of the bag itself, I'll show you some other cool things I like about the bag. When I'm on the road, I don't want my keys in my pocket. They just get in the way, they could get lost. So I actually use this compartment down here for my keys. I store them. I also store an iPhone cable in here. And then there's this really cool pouch right here that has a magnet and an RFI blocker in there. I'll usually keep my passport, uh, my AirPod Pros, and my wallet if I feel like I need to keep my wallet in there. Another cool thing to keep in mind is that you do have these little loops that you can take this strap and put through. Maybe if you wanna put like a tripod or something like that through there, you could. Moving to the side compartment. Now, I will typically use this for water bottles if I don't need to have a tripod. Uh, another cool thing about this is that there's a magnet right here, so when you're not using it, it just, conforms to the side of the bag. It's nice and smooth. You don't have some bulky pouch sticking out the side with a mesh netting that can catch onto things. I think that was a thoughtful part of the design. Speaking of tripods, when I travel on an airplane, this will be carry-on number one. The tripod will be carry-on number two. I keep the tripod in the bag because if I take the tripod out of the bag, then it's gonna draw attention to myself. The gate agent's gonna go, hey, you're a professional. You have a bunch of bulky stuff in there, so now you have to check your bag. And of course, we don't want that. However, once I get to my destination, I just undo this guy, and then you can put him through this right here, this loop, and then through there and then I can carry him around with me if I need to. So you can carry a tripod with you. This of course tightens down if you need it to. Uh, I often will carry a strobe with me on the road and so I need to put my strobe on something and so I'll use something like this light hobo light tripod. Another cool thing about this bag is that I often need to access my laptop quickly. When I open this up, you can store up to a 16 inch laptop in there. So I put my MacBook Pro in there. It's nice and easy to get to a smooth zip up. I should also remark that you can see that with these zippers, uh, there is a water resistance to them and the bag itself is water resistant. Now, if you get into super heavy downpours, they do make a rain fly that's optional for it, but I haven't needed the rain fly so far. So I'm gonna just continue the experiment of not using the rain fly because it's one more thing to carry and I haven't really noticed any issues with the bag getting wet or anything inside the bag getting wet. Uh, speaking of the bag, uh, you can pick the bag up here, but if it's on its side, there's also handles to pick the bag up here. And if you're on the other side, you can pick the bag up here. So depending on how you're loading out, how the bag is oriented, you could just pick it up and carry it if you need to, if you don't want to put it on your back. Additionally, there's one on the bottom, so you could carry it from the bottom if you needed to. So there's four different ways you can pick up this bag. Uh, there's a side access compartment right here. So uh, we did say that this is a Canon RF loadout and as I open this guy up, voila, I have a Canon R5 with a RF 28 to 70 F2 lens. This is what I use for probably 75 to 80% of the stuff I shoot. Uh, oftentimes, this is the only thing that I need if I'm not using flash. All right, let's move on to the inside of the bag. Now, something that you need to get used to about this bag is that I showed you that the bag, okay, we open it up and we access all of our clothes and this and that. If you need to access your camera stuff, you have to flip the bag over. So that is something that you're gonna have to get used to with muscle memory and all that. And while we're looking at the bag itself on the back, you can see right here that there's a pass-through for your luggage, which is great. So if you can wanna put this on your roller bag, if you are taking a second bag, a roller bag, something you're gonna check in, you can put your handle through your luggage pass-through. You can roll it around the airport, you're good to go. Uh, another cool thing about this bag is that there is a cummerbund here and a chest strap. So if you are taking this guy for long, rugged hikes, they definitely thought about that person who is going to struggle with weight. I find that the weight distribution on it is pretty awesome. With the laptop in there, you see how this thing just stands up? You take the laptop out, it stays up. The way this bag is constructed, it's kind of stiff when it's uh, just sitting there. And I think that's actually a good thing because you don't want the bag tipping over or falling forward. I find that the center of gravity on this bag is very balanced. Now that we've flipped it over, we're gonna open it up into the main photography compartment. So starting out, you can see that I have the Canon RF 28 to 70 with the R5. That is my main setup. Now, if I am shooting indoors, I use the RF 85 1.2 for headshots. If I'm shooting outdoors, I'll leave the RF 85 1.2 at home, and instead I'll use the RF 135 1.8. Now, they're both the same filter thread size. However, I find that the RF 
85 millimeter is a little harder to handle out in the field. The barrel is a little larger than the 135, and so it's somewhat awkward. I have pretty average size hands for a guy, and even with my average size hands, I will easily fumble this. I've never dropped it, thankfully, but I've come close several times. I find with the 135, that's less of an issue. I also think that because I'm outdoors, I have more space, and the 135 tends to be a better lens for that job. So. I never usually take the 85 and the 135 on the same job. Uh, I'll usually take one or the other. My other lens that I will sometimes leave at home is my 51.2. Sometimes I find this lens to be a bit redundant with the 28 to 70 F2, depending on what I'm shooting. But I do wanna show you a full loadout of this bag and show you what it is capable of handling. And so I will tell you that the 50 rarely comes with me on shoots, but if I'm going out of town and uh, I'm not really sure about the way that the shoot's gonna turn out, I will take the 51.2 with me. I'll take that extra weight, just in case there's a shot or two where I think it would be better than the 28 to 70 F2. Uh, I also will take my spare SD cards with me. So this is where I keep my spare SD cards. Uh, you definitely want those. Uh, I also keep my DC brick, a little VoltMe DC brick, and uh, that cable that I showed you earlier, that uh, iPhone cable, I will take that with me. Uh, something that I didn't show you in the uh, luggage compartment is I also will take a a wireless magnetic charger for both my uh, Apple Watch and my iPhone. So when I'm in my hotel room, I can just put it on my bedside table. It flattens out, I just put it in the bag. And I find that that's easier for cable management because I only need to use one USB-C cable, uh, which I plug into my laptop, and then that will charge both my watch and my phone at night. Uh, speaking of USB-C and all that, uh, I also carry one USB-C cable with an SSD drive and I carry my CF Express Type B reader. Uh, I just keep all this in here. I use that same USB-C cable to charge this lav mic. I try to consolidate and use as few cables as possible. So uh, that is something that I do is I use less cables. I keep an alternative camera in here. Today, it's an R7. I usually keep an R8 with me, but I'm recording with the R8 right now. I also have an alternative lens selection. I have a 14 to 35 F4. Sometimes I need to get ultra wide shots. And so I'll usually put my wild card lens on my backup camera and just transport it that way. So I have a case with some wireless lav mics in here. I actually have two sets of lav mics in here because I was testing something out. I would usually put something else in here like maybe a Hobo Light Mini or something like that just to give myself a continuous light if I maybe need that on the road. Uh, but speaking of, this is where I keep my wireless go-to road mics. Uh, one of them is on me right now. I keep the spares in here in case I need them. And then I also have this Pro Photo B10, which I take with me on the road. Uh, I have the uh, attachment on here for the color temperature orange and the color temperature blue gels. If I need them, they're, they're magnetic. I keep those gels in this bag, and so I always have a 250 watt strobe if I need it. Now, let's move on to the other part of the bag. Since I'm talking about the Pro Photo B10, here is where I keep that trigger. Because I'm only using one flash, I just have this simple Pro Photo Connect. I don't use the elaborate Pro Photo triggers uh, because they're really expensive. If I lose them, they're you know 400, something like that, $400. And so I use this little $200 guy. I only need to trigger one strobe, and so I can either put it in auto or manual. And if I really need precise control, they have a phone app for that. I also have all of my ND filters in this McKinnon uh, case. And the only reason I got this, remember how I mentioned that I got points for buying this bag and I use those for the compression sacks? Well, I use further points toward this. I probably wouldn't have purchased it. You can easily find a filter case for dirt cheap on Amazon, but it's designed to go in here and it fits rather well, and so I'll zip that up. I keep my Canon spare batteries in here. I have wired earbuds that I keep. I just use this to check levels with my mics. Uh, I don't like to carry big headphones with me on the road. I just need to hear if I'm clipping or not, uh, and that gets the job done. I have an extra eighth inch cable in case I need it. This pouch right here, Right now I'm keeping my laptop cable in here. You could easily fit an iPad, an iPad Air, an iPad mini in here. And that pretty much does it for the bag. Uh, my overall thoughts of the bag so far is that it's been very awesome to use. Uh, my one complaint about it is that it gets dirty pretty easily, and so you have to periodically just wipe it down with a, a damp cloth to get like limestone and other stuff that it brushes up against off of it. 
Additionally, if you decide to stack this guy on a roller bag, you utilize that luggage pass through, do keep in mind in a full loadout, this can get pretty top heavy, but that's less of a con and more of an exercise of common sense. But that's really the only major complaint I have about the bag so far. Uh, some of the zippers sometimes are hard to zip up, but that's the consequence of having these waterproof, water resistant uh, zippers where the water rolls off of it. Uh, so that's really how my loadout works. Um, I would love for you, the viewer, to tell me about how you load out your bag. And if I'm doing something wrong or you have a different way of doing things over how I do them, tell me about it in the comments below because I'm always trying to learn and get better. The whole point of this video is to show you what I've learned over the years about consolidating all of my equipment, getting a smaller footprint, just getting in and out of that airport quickly, not having to sit there and wait for my checked luggage to end up at the baggage claim. So. Uh, tell me about that in the comments below. Do you have a better method? Do you have a better bag? I'm always willing to listen. I'm always willing to grow. That does it for today's episode. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching today. If you like what you saw, tell me about it in the comments below. Do you have the McKinnon 35 liter bag? Are you liking it? Tell me about that in the comments below. If you like this channel, I humbly ask you to click the subscribe button below. And if you like my opinions about photography and videography related subjects and you wanna hear them in their more unfiltered versions, I highly recommend you check out my other YouTube channel, the F11 Photography Podcast. And if you just wanna hear it on your commute to work, it's available on both Apple and Spotify. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.